Today on Ticket Way Weekly, I talk about hard drives, SSDs, and a little bit about PodTract and why I got rid of it. My name is Leah Smith, this is Tiki Way Weekly, and if ever you have any questions, comments, suggestions, and or PC horror stories, you can always email me at ask at tqwayweekly.com, go to my website, tqwayweekly.com, and use this specific page, this one, tqwayweekly.com slash se4ep35, to actually interact with the community, hang out with me, and actually talk about what I'm going to be talking about today, and of course, you can always use the contact page to email me directly off that site, and of course, if you're watching YouTube, web.tv, Vimeo, or anywhere else I post to every single week, you can always post down below. Low. Now, obviously, I used to use PodTrack to actually calculate specific things, not that I care too much about how many people actually subscribe to my show, because I have enough that I actually know basically what I need to talk about and what interests you and whatnot. Now, because I really don't trust websites outside of my own domain, which is why I have a login and not one of those Facebook log me in things or Google's log me in things. PodTrack was basically the only thing I was using outside my site except for YouTube and Blit.tv for the video, which I don't much have of a choice. But PodTrack went down this week because of, I don't know, malicious use and whatever. So for anybody that has subscribed to my show, you might have noticed if you're on any of these websites that you've been kicked over to my server, which is not collecting any stats currently. Again, don't really care. And this means that you actually have a safe, Feed that's actually coming off my website. Now, for those who are interested, I will be soon putting up links to have an SSL enabled RSS feed. Some of you might think this is crazy. I personally do think it is crazy, but it's fun crazy. I'll be one of the few people who actually have an SSL enabled public RSS feed for his podcast, and I will be building out into my system my own statistics engine that will actually give you from that date how many people actually watch or download any of these episodes, which will be interesting for some of you to actually see. Of course, it will depend on how everything interacts with the site, and I don't like loading my site all that much with a bunch of useless stuff. A lot of you may have noticed it's very minimalist. So let's get on to the topic of the day, which is all about hard drives. Now, before anybody asks me, what the hell do I know about this? Keep in mind, I work in a computer store and I have to answer this question every single day. It is a very important thing to understand, to respect, and to also keep in mind when it comes to building your own computer to get the best performance for your buck out of your computer, especially when you're gonna be building a task-specific build. So first, let's talk about Western Digital Green Drives. These are the economical, ecological type of drives that will spin down after not being used for a while, which are perfect for various office environments, some home users, and even libraries and other kinds of places like that where the computers are not necessarily being used all the time, but the computer may very well be on a really long time. By spinning down these drives, the computer is not forced to keep them spinning. The only drawback from this is if they're gonna be under, how do we say, frequent load, it will take more juice to actually get these drives to spin up. So keep that in mind. It is a very good technology for those environments in which the hard drive won't be used all that much. Then you have your standard Western digital blue drives and your normal Seagate drives that you can actually purchase. And these are perfect for all other conventional use, such as offices, homes, where you have users using semi-frequently to computers. You can even game off of them. They're fairly inexpensive and they spin all the time until the power management of your computer actually tells them to spin down. This is something that either Windows programmed at four hours or you specifically told it to spin down after set amount of time. If you even tell the computer to tell it to spin down at all, you can turn that off. Now, there's also a growing trend of trying to get your own personal cloud, which requires NAS drives and your own public service. So you might actually make your own NAS drive by using programs like FreeNAS. Keep in mind that most hard drives are not designed for 24 hour operation. They hate heat and they obviously loathe vibration. So you're gonna be having to use something known as a Western Digital Red Drive or a NAS 
hard drive. These are specifically made for these kinds of environments where there's vibration, 24 operation, and higher than normal heat. These kinds of drives are perfect for that task. They are task specific to this function. Obviously, they don't beat the server grade options that you can get, but we're trying to make sure that you understand as a consumer which hard drive you should be getting for your own purposes. Now, they will die, but keep in mind that as long as you had a warranty from the store, you can just swap them out. These drives are basically warranted for up to like five years. Now, we also have the Western Digital Black Drives and Seagate's Solid State Hybrid Drive, which are perfect for gaming. And in the case of the Western Digital Black Drive, spins up to 10,000 RPM. In the case of the SSHD drive from Seagate, has an SSD cache in it that allows it to burst out the information that you use more frequently. This means you benefit from either one of these technologies in multimedia cases, in cases where you actually game a lot off of them and that you actually need space for your stuff. And then on top of all of this, you actually get the benefit of something that obviously will burn a hole in your electrical bill, but would still get you a better performance, load faster everything, have less latency in your games, less loading times. That's basically everything that has to come. The only other way you can get any faster is migrating yourself over to SSD. Now SSDs come in like 120, 128 gigs, 240, 256 gigs, 250 gigs, or 500 gig drives. Obviously, a lot of you are gonna be like, well, I want to try out SSD, which one should I try? And I'm gonna say, if you're gonna be using it for a little bit of stuff and you're still gonna keep a spinning drive, don't cramp yourself in a 120. I have a 120, it's a cramped drive, especially when you start using a lot of video games on it. You should actually go up to the 240, 250, 256 size drives, which will give you plenty of space to have video games, plenty of space to actually have your operating system and a few actual applications that you might wanna run on that drive. The rest you can leave onto a spinning drive where you can actually access all of your data. This gives you the benefit of speed and extremely low, if even perceivable, loading times in your games. That really depends on the game itself, but if you have enough RAM and you actually have a great enough of juice coming out of your SSD drive, you should see almost no load time whatsoever if your processor and graphics card can potentially handle all that stuff. Now, if you really want to have a single drive in your computer, go up to the 500 gig drive for the SSD. You'll get a lot of space for multimedia in your documents, for your video games, for all your high intensity applications and your operating system, and you'll still have space left behind to add more stuff after. This actually is the best bang for your buck when you think about it when it comes to SSD drives. In the case of hard drives, the best bang for your buck for a normal drive would be a Western Digital Blue Drive or a standard Seagate drive. So basically, that's what I had to tell you today on this specific topic. Choose wisely and be sure that you are task specific when it comes to hard drives. Don't forget to subscribe to my show. Remember to share it to other friends that might actually need this kind of information. And of course, you can always interact with other people at tqaweekly.com se4ep35 for this specific episode. Have a great day.